Hi, today I'd like to share a book with you that is about being yourself and believing in yourself. It's one of my favorites and it's called Stand Tall, Molly Lou Mellon. It was written by Patti LaVelle and illustrated by David Catro. Here's the cover. Molly Lou Mellon stood just taller than her dog and was the shortest girl in the first grade. She didn't mind. Her grandma had told her, walk as proudly as you can and the world will look up to you. Here's a picture of her standing there. And if you can see her bed, she's so short that she has to have a ladder, it looks like, to get up to her bed. So she did. Look at her. She's going down the banister on her hand. That doesn't look very safe. <laughs> Molly Lou Mellon had buck teeth that stuck out so far she could stack pennies on them. She didn't mind. Her grandma had told her, smile big and the world will smile right alongside you. So she did! Look at her. She's got a big smile. Molly Lou Mellon had a voice that sounded like a bullfrog being squeezed by a boa constrictor. She didn't mind. Her grandma had told her, sing out clear and strong and the world would cry tears of joy. Look at her. She's right there with the bullfrog. And look at the bullfrog's expression. He's looking like, what is going on? You sound like a bullfrog, but you're not a bullfrog. So she did. She's enjoying singing. All the bugs are listening. Molly Lou Mellon was often fumble-fingered. She didn't mind. Her grandma had told her, believe in yourself and the world will believe in you too. Fumble finger means you probably drop stuff a lot. So look, look at all the dishes that are cracked on the floor. Oh, over here, she's trying to carry them and then they got broken. So she did. She looks like the cat in the hat there doing a crazy stunt on her unicycle and balancing things. Then Molly Lou Mellon moved to a new town. She had to say goodbye to her grandma and all of her friends. That's a hard thing to do. Their, house, their cars got all their luggage on top. And it says for sale in the front of their house. And start in a new school. Boy, probably you all remember starting in a new school when you started here for kindergarten or, or TK or preschool. It's kind of a tough thing to do. On the first day of school, Ronald Durkin called her Shrimpo in gym class. That's not very nice, is it? Kind of reminding me of the chrysanthemum story. Shrimp is small, so that must mean he's making fun of how small she is. When the game started, Molly Lou Mellon caught the football, ran under the legs of Ronald Durkin, and scored a touchdown. All the children thought, wow, she's good. And Ronald Durkin felt very foolish. So he made fun of her, but she showed him, didn't she? Look at her making her touchdown. That ball is almost as big as her. Look at Ronald Durkin flying up in the air. On the second day of school, Ronald Durkin called her Bucky Tooth Beaver. That doesn't sound nice either. Molly Lou Mellon took out her pennies, stacked ten high in her teeth, and smiled as big as day. All the children smiled with glee, and Ronald Durkin felt very foolish. So he made fun of her teeth, but now everybody thinks she's cool that she can do this, right? And Ronald is looking kind of embarrassed over there. 
On the third day of school, Ronald Durkin said, you sound like a sick duck. Honk, honk. He's not being very nice. Molly Lou Mellon sang out a quack so clear and strong that it made Ronald Durkin somersault backwards, hit his head, and have to go to the nurse. All the children cried with joy to be free of Ronald Durkin for the rest of the afternoon, and Ronald Durkin felt very foolish. He's a little bit like Mean Jean, the recess queen, isn't he? On the fourth day of school, Ronald Durkin said that she'd made the snowflake all wrong. But Molly Lou Mellon opened up her paper and revealed the most beautiful snowflake of all. All the children oohed and awed, even Ronald. So they were cutting out snowflakes. And look at how huge hers is. And look at all the details. He even had to admit it looked great. On the fifth day of school, Ronald Durkin brought Molly Lou Mellon a stacking penny for her tooth and smiled at her. This is reminding me more and more of the Reese's Queen now. That night, Molly Lou Mellon took out a pencil and paper and wrote a letter to her grandma. Dear Grandma, I wanted to tell you that everything you told me was exactly right. Love, Molly Lou Mellon. Look how cute her grandma is. She looks like she's the size of Molly Lou. Very cute. Tell your family who are the characters, what is the setting of the story, um, what the problem in the story was, and how it got solved. And I will see you soon.